Chris, what is main topic number five? This one's from Lawton. Hey, John and crew, The Wrap posted an article basically detailing a report that instead of DC canceling Wonder Woman 3, Patty Jenkins actually walked off and left the project due to creative differences with executives and apparently emailing studio chief Mike DeLuca. Thoughts? All right, Mike, thanks a lot for saying that in. And this is going back to this whole evolving story about what are they going to do with DC? Now, look, they did not take over Warner Brothers create a brand new DC studio, appoint brand new heads just to keep the same thing going. I mean, that would be idiotic. Oh, just, just keep think let's just, just keep going with the thing we have. The thing that's been consistently underperforming other than a few flashes here and there and just, just try to patchwork it together. No, no, we knew there were going to be big changes, but which changes, how far stretching will those changes be? And of course, a big report, came out we read this the other day but i'm just going to reread it again here just for a second that the hollywood reporter this is what started this whole thing off okay i'm just going to read it here then we read this yesterday but the hollywood reporter wrote this uh in their outlet the other day part of the plan could entail a truly fresh start and having no baggage from any previous regimes as they set about resetting how resetting i should say how dc movies and shows are made so that was really the thing that this thing that went off that was in the Hollywood Reporter kind of causing this thing. And we found out that Wonder Woman 3 had been canned, all this kind of stuff. Well, James Gunn put out this tweet and we read this yesterday, but let's bring it up here right now. And just to refresh our memories, James Gunn got on Twitter and he wrote a bunch of stuff, but the heart of it was his very first tweet regarding it. And James Gunn said, so as for the story yesterday in the Hollywood Reporter, some of it is true. Some of it is half true, some of it's not true, and some of it, we haven't decided yet whether it's true or not. Mm -hmm. So I think that is, that one little statement that James Gunn put out yesterday is something we have to keep at the forefront of our minds with any development that comes out before they meet with David Zaslav and pitch their eight to 10 year plan, right? And one of those things that he was talking about that is half true, not true, whatever, seems to revolve a little bit around Patty Jenkins and Wonder Woman 3. Because apparently, they didn't just straight up axe Wonder Woman 3. It was that Patty Jenkins walked away from it because they said they didn't like her story. This comes to us from the folks over at The Hollywood Reporter who wrote the following. According to those in the know, it was Patty Jenkins who walked away after receiving notes on the treatment she submitted to the studio. Apparently, her threequel pitch had character arc problems, that means story problems, had character arc problems that rivaled those of Wonder Woman 1984. We hear that Warner Brothers motion picture chiefs Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi, the two heads who were kind of overseeing DC until James Gunn took over, James Gunn and Peter Safran, had concerns about the treatment before Peter Safran and James Gunn weighed in. The group provided notes Jenkins fought back and defended her visions that the threequels characters arc were solid. Jenkins was given the opportunity for another pass, but opted to walk. So if we break this down, what apparently happened was that Patty Jenkins submitted her treatment for the film. The people in charge at the time, the two Warner Brothers studio heads, people in charge at the time, looked at and said, this is not good. They gave her notes. They said, you're going to need to make some changes to which Patty Jenkins said, fuck you very much and decided to walk. Now in that light, it's not tremendously unlike the Edgar Wright situation with Ant-Man. I mean, obviously there were some big differences there. Like five years had passed between when Edgar Wright came on to do Ant-Man and then the MCU evolved and changed and Kevin Feige wanted, realized that the Ant-Man that Edgar Wright was going to make, that he wanted him to make initially, no longer fit with the MCU that they had, wanted him to make changes. Edgar Wright says, ah, this is the movie I want to I want to make, and they amicably parted ways. So there's a little bit of similarities here with that, a few, at least at any rate. But Patty Jenkins appeared that, you no, know, she wanted her movie to be a certain way. And this was, remember, this was all before James Gunn and Peter Safran took over. So it's very possible that James Gunn and Peter Safran could have stepped in and said, if yesterday's Hollywood Reporter thing is correct and they just want to start fresh, that they might have killed Wonder Woman 3 anyway. 
But hearing this means maybe there's a possibility that they still want Wonder Woman as a part of their plans. Me personally, I still think what they're actually looking at is a fresh reboot. Again, we don't know that. That is us just speculating based on the little bit of information that we have. But it does feel like they want a fresh start anyway, but it sounds like this thing was kind of sabotage before it even got to James Gunn and Peter Safran. Hey guys, we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Athletic Greens. Now, I started taking Athletic Greens because I don't eat enough vegetables, and I was looking for a way to make up for that deficit in my diet of those vitamins and minerals that I really need in my system, and thank goodness I found Athletic Greens, and I literally take it every morning. You see, with one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, all the things. And my wife got onto it, and now she absolutely loves it. You know, tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will absolutely actually absorb like athletic greens. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash campia. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash campia to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So anyway, Rob, you hear this story about Patty Jenkins, who, listen, Patty was riding when the first Wonder Woman came out, which was a huge triumph. That movie was a triumph. And she was on top of the world. Since then, she's lost Cleopatra. She, it looks like she's lost the Star Wars movie. It now appears she's lost Wonder Woman. Uh, not, not a great series of events for her right now. She's a great director. I mean, Wonder Woman 84 was a stinker. Everybody's got a bad day at the office. She's a wonderful director. But uh, what do you think about this particular story and how does it shape your overall view of the whole situation going on at DC right now with James Gunn and Peter Safran? <clears throat> well, I think for her, she's had a lot of frustration dealing with Warner Brothers because the day and date with HBO Max released during the pandemic of Wonder Woman yeah, 84. Yeah, that, that caused a lot of tension. With and her. and I, I look, I, I found Wonder Woman 84 to be hugely disappointing, especially as a follow-up. I thought to the first Wonder Woman, I really like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, but even as what they were trying to do, Wonder Woman 84 is problematic on a number of levels. I don't think any of it really works. And I think that uh, it, it it made very little money. It didn't do much at the box office. It wasn't well-reviewed and it wasn't particularly well-liked. So add to that what the studio did during the pandemic. And I think that Patty Jenkins had a level of frustration with, she stayed through, when she started Wonder Woman, you had Kevin Sujahara running the studio. That's right, yeah. Then you had Jason Kalar running the studio. Then you had David Zaslav running the studio. And I, I think that there's a lot of, of frustration in her that she's like, here's my treatment. This is what we want to do. And if you don't want to do this, I'm. Uh, why am I listening to you? You're going to be out the door in a year anyway. Mm. I mean, I, I I think that there was maybe an element of that because for her, she got her $10 million payday or whatever from Wonder Woman 84, the bonus they gave her. She's like, this is, life's too short. And, and I can understand that. I can, I, I think that there was an element of that. But to me, James Gunn and Peter Safford had nothing to do with this. This had been building. It was a, a product of three studio regimes. And I think that this was just something because they're about superheroes and DC characters, they're, they're being conflated when I don't think they have anything to do with what James Gunn and Peter Safran are doing. That said, moving forward, they're going to go for a complete reboot. You still believe that the yeah. complete reboot be, be, is what's on the table? Because, because from a, let's take aside our fandom, you know, let's, let's take all that out of it. If you were starting a new direction for uh, the ship, the DC universe has never worked entirely. It's just never worked. It's never lived up to its, it's potential. It's never lived that's up to its like potential. To it. Yes, and that's the best way to put it. Uh, it it's so it, it's always kind of limped along. Now you have 
uh, a visionary filmmaker who's made these movies and you have a visionary producer who's also made these movies and and they are going to start from scratch because they have the opportunity to do so when you're given this opportunity you have a brand new studio regime behind you you start from scratch and you build something new from the ground up that's yours and the fact of the matter is if James Gunn can do for the DC universe what he did for Guardians of the Galaxy and create these movies with this kind of tone, this kind of fun, though if nothing else, what studio wouldn't even Steven Spielberg says, I love that Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, when he talks comic book movies, that's what he's talking about. And I think that it's best for everyone, it's best for the studios, it's best for James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's best for us as viewers that they start from scratch and do something new. Chris, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of dynamics at play here. Number one is the, the specific situation that's going on with Wonder Woman 3 or lack thereof. So what is your takeaway from what's going on with Wonder Woman 3 specifically? And then how does that shape your speculation and shape your view of what's going on with DC as a whole right now? What direction do you think they're ultimately going in here? I mean, it's interesting, right? Because right before all of this kind of went down, Gal Gadot did that kind of cryptic... I can't wait to show you her next chapter tweet. Yeah, but that about, was days before this came just out. Just a yeah. few, yeah, because she tweeted that the 6th, the 8th yeah. is when the story came out and everything, right? So I think everyone was feeling optimistic, at least on the uh, the production side of things there. Right. Um, so I, I just find it fascinating that all of these DC actors, though, are stating their place in the DC universe, and then we hear other sources say not so much. Um, just got to get our house in a little bit of order here. And I think that's the big thing that's happening is that DC's doing a very big restructure. I mean, I echo both of you guys. They're trying to have this clean slate to move forward to live up to the wonderful stories these comics have. I mean, their catalog is incredible. Their villains gallery is outstanding. There is no reason why a DC property should not blow Marvel out of the water, really. I mean, their stories are really, really cool. So I think that a lot of this just comes down to trying to get that structure that's going to work for them, work for the properties that they have, and there's going to be casualties along the way. Patty Jenkins probably wants to do more of her own thing. She's gone through so many regime, change, or regime changes. She's gone through a lot of different uh, notes on her scripts. Maybe didn't take some of the ones she should have, if we can look to Wonder Woman 84 for anything. But I, I think a lot of this really is just trying to get DC where it needs to be. I don't think it's anything personal. I don't think there's anything nefarious happening in the wings. I think there's just been some creative differences trying to get this structured properly. It is going to be really interesting to see because I, I mean, one of the things, I, look, I trust James Gunn and Peter Safran like completely. Like I, I so I'll get behind whatever thing is. I do think it would be a little bit of a mistake to half-ass it, to say, we're kind of rebooting it, but we're going to keep all these other things around. I just don't know if that's the right approach, but if, if that's what they come up with, I'll say, well, then clearly they got a vision for it. I, I, I still think today, despite the fact that it would mean losing my beloved Henry Cavill as Superman, I, I still think, look, you got to put the overall health of the franchise first. The oh, Where can a DC universe be three years from now, five years from now? And I just, I feel like right now where we're sitting with very limited information, I feel like the best way to get to that level is not by trying to keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's about saying, look, we had some success with this, but it's never gotten us close to our potential. If we want to get here, the only way that's going to happen is if we start fresh and build it right. With, the, with a solid foundation and build from there. There's just too much baggage right now, but we will see. I mean, look, Henry Cavill may still be Superman. Gal Gadot may still be Wonder Woman. I, I still think we're going to get a peacemaker either way. So it's going to be really interesting. I'm sure we are not done talking about this story at all. The question is for you guys. What do you think about all this? Number one, finding out that it was Patty Jenkins who kind of reject. Now, granted, this was before James Gunn came on, but saying, I didn't like the notes I got back from studio. I'm walking from Wonder Woman 3. Do you think Wonder Woman 3 would have got axed anyway once James Gunn got there? Maybe they're still going to move forward. Whatever you guys think, jump down in the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.